Hello, book lovers. I'm Peg, coming to you from my porch again this morning. It's uh, kind of rainy out, but it's still nice to be out on the porch uh, rather than locked up inside. We had a terrible storm. I think it went all across the East Coast last night. Blew trees down and we made it through okay though. Okay, I have been working on a summer reading plan. Uh, I, I see a lot of people in BookTube these days kind of pondering really what they want their chat their channel to be and what they want to read and and uh, I've, I've spent some time thinking about you know what do I want to read this summer on the porch and I've come up with a plan a weekly plan which I have put in the show notes down below of uh, four different uh, types of books I want to approach each week, maybe not finish, but at least approach, and uh, you can put see that there. But the first one, I want, uh, since I have a wonderful library that gets all the new books, I'm going to try to every week snag a just published book and, and talk about it. And uh, so this week I'm starting with uh, the new one by Michael Ondaatje called Warlight or light. Now this is going to be terrible here because it's a very dark, gloomy picture anyway, uh, purposely. And uh, war light actually uh, alludes to the emergency lights that were allowed to be on during the blackouts during the war in London. And uh, this is really a a gloomy picture in the first place, but it does get the idea of the book across the atmosphere. Uh, anyway, so let me tell you a little bit about Michael Ondaatje. Um, he's best. He's had six different novels written. As best known one is The English Patient, which was a Booker Prize winner and uh, made into a movie and won some Academy Awards for the movie. So that's probably the one most of you have heard about. And um, he's now in his 70s, um, s but still writing. <laughs> and uh, this one deals, as I said, with England right after the um, World War II, where strange things were still going on with spies and strange doings. And this is actually, you might say, a coming of age story and a mystery uh, together. Um, it's a, the narrator is a 14-year-old boy. It's 1946, and the first sentence uh, is really a good one and kind of sets up the whole book for you. Here's the first sentence. In 1945, our parents went away and left us in the care of two men who may have been criminals. Um, so that really drags you in right there and, and what's the story about? He does have a, an older sister who I believe is 17 and they really are, their parents explain to them they have to go to Singapore and work and, and uh, the, all of a sudden they're left with this guy, this lodger upstairs in their house who's rather strange and he has some strange people that come in and you know I'm not going to really go into the story from there at all because it would all be spoilers but lots of things happen and uh, finding out what really happened where the parents really went and and the background of all this um, I will say that there's one great scene near the first so I'm not spoiling it um, one of their the guys that hang around this house is kind of a small time criminal and he um, imports greyhound dogs illegally. Uh, I guess the races, dog races were becoming a big thing then. And he goes on these small boats through the canals um, off of the Thames River to, to pick up these dogs. And the, the young man who's telling the story goes with him once. And uh, it's a fantastic scene where they have to spend all night in this mansion he with his girlfriend with these that they broke into with these this bunch of illegal greyhounds it's just i call it the greyhound scene in the mansion uh it's just a great scene and you know that's all i'm going to tell you about this i will say that it's the rest of it is written in kind of a non-linear in in a dream-like style so don't expect a straightforward mystery with answers sure answers 
anyway so it's it's very it's very good i think it will probably do well in the maybe maybe be up for the book or actual booker prize even okay uh next on my list or down there somewhere is i want to read at least one book from a prize list book prize list uh, every week that gives me lots of choice and lots of prizes and uh, today i'm going to concentrate on a prize that's coming going to be awarded this saturday night called the nebula prize and it is uh, sponsored by the science fiction and fantasy writers of america and they've chosen their own best novel from amongst their own uh, and it's a great great group of novels I've, I've put in the link below also the nebula banquet and, and ceremony will be held in pittsburgh this weekend um, i think all the dinner banquet tickets are gone but i think it will probably be live streamed and i know thomas from sf 100 is going to it and he usually gives a great vlog of the time of the time he had at the at the nebulas incidentally my star Wars shirt on today in you know because it's sci-fi week okay um so the book i'm i read from this list is called the strange case of the alchemist daughter and i'll just tell you right off it's a play on the book called the strange case of dr jekyll and mr hyde um and this is actually a uh, you might say time travel book where it has uh, the the supposed daughter of Dr. Jekyll uh, teaming up with Hyde's daughter and other daughters of uh, of uh, characters in this in the Victorian uh, horror genre there's a Mary or there's somebody named Justine Frankenstein and anyway they're going back to solve the problems that were brought up in the book Jekyll and Hyde and still hunting for Hyde uh, they even managed to get uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson in on it so it's just a really fun uh, type novel and um, this led me to I'm going, I, I want to read either a classic or an older book each week and this led me to reading the original uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde which I think I've read long, long time ago. It's called, in fact, the whole name is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's by Robert Louis Stevenson. And uh, this was published in 1886 and deals with a, I'll hold it up, this is a pretty good picture. Well, I'm not getting it after all. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's get it bigger. <laughs> okay, uh, this deals with a, a, a uh, a lawyer who's telling the story and about his friend Dr. Jekyll an actual doctor who um, seems to have um, this evil Edward Hyde guy staying with him and um, people can't figure out why he likes him or why he's around and it turns out to be probably the first in in liter literary history case of a split personality and uh, in fact, the, the term Jekyll and Hyde is even used today to show a character in, in different, that goes into strangely different moods and has different morals in each of them. Um, so this was, this was well done and turned out to be psychologically a thing. Um, anyway, okay, the other kind of book, the fourth kind of thing I want to read this summer is a book uh, of is some short stories and we're going to try to read start with reading all week short stories by the same author so maybe I'll be able to note more on the style and uh, pretty new to short stories but I, I figure I can learn anyway but this this time I read it's also a fairly new uh, uh, publication called Cloudburst by Thomas McGuane now he is known as the writer from montana he's been he's written 13 books and uh the one you may have heard of is called 92 in the shade and um they're great depictions of uh, of montana the feel of the land in montana i, I i've read one but i can't remember which one but i always kind of like that i like uh atmospheric stories of the scenery and uh this has it's pretty thick and it has 
um, short stories from his whole career. And I actually could tell some difference as I, I didn't read all of them, but I kind of read each one a day from different sections of the book and different writing times. And um, it, it actually, one of the uh, reviews said that it depicts loneliness and mental disturbances. And one of them in particular, there was a, a story called Like a Leaf near the front that he wrote in 1983. It was rather surreal. It had a recent widower who obviously was feeling lonely and 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 uh, going through some some grieving uh, and it starts with him being <laughs> under the uh, house of his neighbor he's there to put some rat poisoning out or something and he can hear his neighbor having a woman over for an illicit affair and he can hear him <laughs> and he decides that he likes this woman and uh, he eavesdrops, and anyway, it goes on with him approaching this woman, and she doesn't realize that he's hurt her and with this other man, and it becomes quite surreal and uh, interesting. <laughs> so anyway, um, it, it seems like he got more realistic as he went on in his stories, but I kind of thought those early ones were good. Okay, so that's my reading for this week, and... Here's probably what you all wanted to see is the progress on my wedding rainbow wedding blanket that I'm going to be making, or I am making, to wedding f this summer. And I want, we're counting the stripes now. That's how we see the progress. There's going to be 10 stripes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and part of seven. So I've got three and a half more to do and the best part is now I'm getting into the bright colors the real rainbow colors so I'll be back later with more thanks bye